10 pieces of backpacking gear that you don't need to carry on the trail. Now I've carried some dumb things backpacking. And these are all things I used to carry and I no longer do, mostly because the weight just doesn't justify carrying it. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about one piece of gear. This is actually like a riddle. That's for backpacking that I never take on the trail that is crucial. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get that little nugget of advice. It might, it might save your life. It, it won't. And it's three o'clock on a Sunday, so that means cracker open. Number one, bring canned beer, not bottles. I'm just kidding, that's not a real tip. Number one on the list is ground sheet for my tent. The idea of a footprint is that it's going to protect the bottom of your tent from abrasion or things potentially poking holes through it. Also giving you an extra layer of material as kind of a vapor barrier so moisture doesn't seep up through the bottom of your tent. There's definitely applications where a ground sheet is good. Let's say you camp somewhere with a lot of pointy rocks and sticks, or if you're one of them desert guys that lives in cactus country, a little bit of extra protection protection might be nice to have, although I think a, a cactus <laughs> Uh, is gonna stick up through but they do have their place just like a lot of stuff on this list These are all things that I have stopped carrying like I said, but it might not be uh, the same where you uh, Backpack in your system So take these with a grain of salt and wash it down with a cold one Some tents either come with or have an option to buy a footprint available for them I've carried those before I've also used Tyvek and polycryo cryo not crow. Everybody says poly crow. It's cryo. And I have no room to judge because I say everything wrong. Water filter. Durr with a D. Of all the years of using ground sheets, I've never had anything even poke up through the ground sheet. I used them for the most part for a while because I wanted that extra vapor barrier. If you set up your tent in a dip in the ground where all the water is going to pool underneath you, it's going to soak through eventually. Tyvek's definitely going to be more waterproof or water resistant. But I really think as long as you're mindful of where you're setting up your tent uh, as far as drainage goes and what you're putting your tent on you really just don't need a ground sheet one good uh, benefit of the ground sheet is it just keeps the bottom of your tent clean especially when it's wet and everything wants to stick to that but other than that i just kind of think they're a pain in the ass when it's really windy out, they just kind of blow all over the place before you get your tent set on it. And unless you have the manufactured footprint for the tent that actually has the grommets, you have to make sure that that footprint stays underneath your tent. If you have a corner of it outside, the water's going to drip off of your tarp, onto your ground sheet, and right under your tent. Here's a clip from my first trip. Now you can see I'm using like a big blue tarp, which is great for abrasion, but I had the great idea to make a little porch on it. And that night it poured and all that water water went straight under the tent and I swore when I woke up I was sleeping in a waterbed. Don't make that mistake. Number two, foam sleeping pads. There's a lot of different foam pads in the market. Some of them are more comfortable than others and they definitely have their place. A lot of through hikers like them for the reliability. I mean, you're not gonna pop your foam pad. Or if you're someone that likes to go really off trail staying in non-established campsites or cactus country. Inflatable pads are what I use and they're just the way to go for me. They do not like cactuses. And yeah, you gotta blow it up, but I mean, that's like, what, 30 seconds to a minute of the entire day you're out there? Like, come on. If you are bringing a foam pad because you don't wanna blow it up, Quit being lazy. Hundreds of different kinds of blow up pads on the market out there, one for everybody. You cannot argue with the comfort. If you're going out to like actually like enjoy your time out there, you're gonna wanna get a good night's sleep and the inflatable pads, just the way to go. By the way, I'm gonna have links to most of this stuff in the description below. And if there's something I talk about that I don't have links, comment down below and I'll, I'll throw you up a link. Next on the list is cotton clothing, like the one I'm wearing from Into the AM. Now you don't wanna do anything out there that's gonna jeopardize your life. If it's the summertime, it's not gonna get that cold. You're gonna be fine wearing something like this sweet shirt from Into the AM. But in the colder months, you're definitely gonna to wanna to think more on the survivalist side and wear something synthetic. You know, not like this sweet cotton shirt from Into the AM. You get this wet, it's gonna be really hard to dry out. Dry wicking shirts actually dry a lot quicker and your body heat is actually gonna dry them out just by wearing it. Now when I'm not on a backpacking trip, I uh, usually wear clothes usually sweet graphic tees like this one from into the a did I mention who makes this check it out a little tent little fire this is my new favorite clothing company and supporters of the channel super comfortable great shirts I actually love their basic tees I pretty much want one in every color except for orange 
That's gross. And the graphic tees just get better and better. They drop new graphic tees every single week on their website. And guess what? Still got bundle deals. You can get a three pack of their plain basic tees for 50 bucks and a three pack of their sweet graphic tees for 60. Below in the description is a link. You gotta use the link. Type in Bryce10 as your code. You get 10% off of your entire order. Number three are big, heavy cutting tools. Now I've carried all of the above backpacking, big knives, hatchets, and I've even been known to rock a machete at times. So there's a time and a place for all these, obviously. I backpack with a saw, so like a saw is great for just cutting little logs. You don't really need to, to split them down with a hatchet or anything. I like a little fixed blade knife. You really can get away with a, a folding, just some cutting tool at all I think is important to have. I have like a Mora Eldris knife. I really like that thing. It's beefy enough that I can still split down little pieces of wood if I need to get to a dry center to get a fire started in wet conditions. But everything else is pretty much overkill unless it's the kind of trip you wanna go on where you're gonna process a lot of wood. Swinging an ax can be fun and if you're in the like Canadian Amazon, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a thing. Probably not gonna need the machete unless you are really, really going deep off trail. Number four, boots. I just, I don't wear boots anymore. Actually, I do sometimes in the winter. But 99% of the time I'm backpacking, I'm wearing trail runners. They're basically like tennis shoes with a boot-like grip. Some people really like the idea of having ankle support, and I say the idea because I don't really feel like boots have really ever given me like ankle support. If you're gonna roll your ankle, uh, I don't think a boot's gonna stop that really. But the majority of trail runners on the market just weigh so much less than boots. When you hike, you know, upwards of 10 miles in boots, it sucks. And the first thing you do when you get to camp is you wanna take those things off. I have uh, waterproof trail runners, which are my new best friend for winter. Uh, I still will wear like heavy boots in the snow and stuff because I don't really want uh, my feet wet or, or water getting down into my shoes. Number five, sleeping bags. The easiest place to drop a lot of weight when you're a new backpacker. A lot of times you're starting, you don't have the best, smallest, uh, lightest gear out there. So this was definitely an area where I lost a lot of weight whenever I upgraded. Now there are good sleeping bags that are made of down or even more compressible synthetic material that actually weigh little, they compress small, but I found that they're just really expensive and a lot of quilts on the market it, kind of more bang for the buck. I found that the more affordable options are quilts, which take a little bit of a learning curve because it's it's not a zip up sleeping bag. You might have some drafts. You got to like tuck it in your sides and stuff. I mean, it's not an issue for me. I know a lot of people complain about that. Number six, numbers, lantern. So I used to bring this Coleman lantern that took like, I think 4D size batteries. Dude, the thing weighed like probably two pounds. Ridiculous. It's 2022. Headlamps are pretty damn good nowadays. They have like a million lumens. So like a tiny little headlamp, everybody in your party has one. That is plenty enough light. If you really, really want that like community lantern, there's good options out there. I know there's one called the Lucy Light, L-U-C-I. It's like four and a half ounces. I think that's like 120 some grams. That thing's sweet. It's, uh, I don't know if it's solar charging or USB charging, but it lasts a while. I've camped with people that have had them. Great options for a lantern. I use the Petzl Ico Core headlamp, mostly because they sent it to me and I'm too cheap to buy anything better. But it came with a, a little white bag that doubles as like a lantern. You, you put it over the light and cinch it down and it's really cool. It's the carry case for it and doubles as a lantern. Win-win. Number seven is a large first aid kit. Now trip dependent, and depending how accident prone you are, you don't need to bring eight different types of painter levers, a splint, and an arm sling. Or maybe you do. I don't, don't, don't take, take what you need. All I usually need out there though is like a couple pain pills, a little bit of blister care, blister prevention, and a few band-aids. Cause the worst injury that I usually sustain out there is like a little scratch or something. You might want to stop the bleeding. Oh, and little antiseptic towel. It's, you know, it's good to clean that stuff before you wrap it up. That's pretty good. You know, you usually have like a little bit of tape on you. You can make a bigger bandage if you really need one. If you really like slice something open or just sacrifice a layer of clothing and tape it on but huge first aid kits I found that I just never used. And I know you're saying you, you when you need it, you won't have it. And you're kind of right, but uh, you know, you gotta know your limits. I know where I'm camping and the people I'm with, like most of the places I backpacked, even the places that were out kind of in the middle of the nowhere, you're usually pretty close to a road or you're pretty, 
pretty close to a good exit point. So even if you have a long walk to get to help, you're really only gonna have to patch yourself up for like a day, probably. Now, if I'm 500 miles deep in the, the Canadian Amazon, I'm packing a wheelchair. The next one is paracord, also known as 550 cord. It's always good to bring a little bit of cordage. Primarily, it's my bear line. Throw that over a tree, hang your bear bag. That's pretty much all I ever use it for. In emergencies, it's good to have cordage as well. I don't bring the paracord. It's just a little bit bulky. It's kind of heavy. Now I bring 50 feet of Dyneema Zingit. It's just way lighter, way smaller, and it fits in a little Dyneema sack that I have that I fill up with rocks. It's my throw bag to throw over trees so I don't have to find sticks. It's just small. It fits down in the pack a lot nicer, and it's just super lightweight. Lightweight gear is your friend. Number eight is a thermometer. So I used to bring this like thermometer, whistle, all, all this, I don't know, I've had a compass on it too, I think, but I don't bring a designated thermometer anymore. My watch that I wear, which is a Koros Pace, it has a thermometer on it. It's got a, a compass on it, an altimeter, barometer, it's got all kinds of stuff. Uh, the only time I really check temp is when I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm usually curious of how cold it's dropping. So I'll take my watch off and I'll put it in a tent pocket. Just a heads up, I'm a Koros affiliate. I love being a Koros affiliate. Best battery life, bang for your buck, GPS watches out there. Koros dash Newbold, if you're gonna buy one, you can get a free accessory like a shirt or something. Uh, when I did five days, uh, 60 miles in Colorado, five days I did not charge that thing and it tracked all our hikes. Same thing when I went out to Washington this year, five days, did not charge that at all, tracked all of my hikes GPS. Pretty dead by the end of that. It was very, very low, but that's also like their base model watch. I think it's like 200 bucks. I, I know I've tracked like upwards of 27 hours on one battery. The new watch I got, I just got a, a, a Vertex. Dude, I don't, I don't even wanna get into that. The GPS life is ridiculous. Number nine is a pack cover. Now, obviously I have waterproof material backpacks, so I don't need the pack cover, but if I still had the old traditional packs that weren't waterproof, I mean, I'd still use the pack cover, but I wanna stress the importance of pack liners. So even though my stuff is waterproof on the outside, you want to make sure you have that fail safe. You want to have everything in like at least a trash bag, which is what I use, or Nyloflume pack liners to just make sure all your crucial gear, like your extra clothing, your quilt, all your warmth for night is going to stay dry. Pack covers on traditional backpacks work great, but water can still get in there through dripping down on your straps and the back side that's not covered. Let's say it's drizzling and, and you go through a stream and you, you just dunk it. You just eat it in the water. All your stuff in your pack, if it's not in at least dry bags or with a pack liner, it's it's gonna get wet and that's gonna be a pretty miserable trip. The riddle, did you guys figure it out? A piece of gear for backpacking that you don't take backpacking. The scale. Now this thing I use all the time. Sometimes I'll have a choice between two pieces of gear. They might do the same thing. They might have no benefit from one to the other. They feel similar. Throw it on the scale and it turns out one of them weighs twice as much. And if you're using gear that weighs twice as much as it needs to, all those little ounces, all those little grams add up. It's just nice to have an idea of what all your gear weighs. So I love this scale. I've used this thing Dude, for like seven years probably. Go pick one of these up, they're cheap. Start weighing your gear and be more conscious of what you're actually carrying on your back. Now, if you wanna carry heavy packs, I by all means go for it. I know some of you guys are gonna be out there commenting down below. Having a light pack is just nice though. It, it saves your joints, it's easier on your body, helps you enjoy your time out there just more. If you guys wanna see my personal backpacking gear in action, click on this video right here. This is the first video of my Colorado series this year. Make sure you guys subscribe if you like this stuff. Hit that little notification bell. Check me out on Patreon too. I'm dropping bombs on there too. You guys are missing out. Go check me out.